the Stackelbeck on Terror. Well, if you're watching this show right now, I'd venture to say that you're the kind of person who likes the truth, unapologetic, bold, biblical, and unfiltered. So, that means you're the kind of person who is absolutely sick about the fact that our Pentagon still can't bring itself to call the Fort Hood massacre what it was, Islamic terrorism. We all remember the horrific day in November 2009 when jihadist and U.S. Army Major Nidal Hassan slaughtered 13 of his fellow soldiers while yelling, Allahu Akbar, Allah is greatest. Prior to his jihadi rampage, Hassan was in touch with Al-Qaeda cleric Anwar al-Awlaki and had business cards printed up that read, Soldier of Allah. Then he goes, of course, and murders a bunch of his colleagues while shouting the universal Islamic war cry. Pretty open and shut case of Islamic terror, right? Wrong. Try workplace violence. No, really. That's what the Pentagon called the Fort Hood jihadist attack in its official review of the incident. Workplace violence. You know, it was like two guys haggling over a parking spot or a guy getting into a shoving match with his overbearing boss. And by the way, no mention of Islam in that Pentagon report. No, no. After all, why focus on Islam and how its core texts inspire terrorists like Nidal Hassan when there's apparently a much more dangerous enemy threatening our nation? Christianity. During a recent training briefing with a U.S. Army Reserve unit in Pennsylvania, an Army training instructor conducted a very interesting PowerPoint presentation. In one of the slides, which you can see here, he labeled evangelical Christianity, Catholicism, Orthodox Jewish groups, and so-called Islamophobia as forms of religious extremism. And as you can see, he listed evangelical Christianity at the very top of the list, followed by Al-Qaeda, Hamas, the Nation of Islam, etc., etc. Bear in mind, he apparently means all evangelical Christians and all serious practicing Catholics. No qualifiers there. If you are a Christian who believes in the inherent truth of the Bible and that Jesus Yeshua is the way, the truth, and the life, the Savior of the world. You, my friend, are a problem. You're an extremist. You are setting back progress with your archaic, hateful old superstitions and beliefs. You just won't get with the times. This is the age of Obama, folks. And he and his friends are going to fundamentally transform America, just like he promised. Now, an Army spokesman said that the slide in question was not condoned by the Army and that it's since been deleted from the presentation. I do believe it's been deleted, but only because of all the bad publicity it caused. And I'm sorry, I don't believe this PowerPoint presentation just slipped through the cracks. At this level, when you're training Army Reserves, I would think it's pretty hard to go rogue with no vetting of your materials. Don't kid yourself. The waters are being tested. We saw a similar situation recently at a law enforcement training class for the Colorado State Police. One of the attendees in the class told TheBlaze.com that the instructor was teaching a course about the so-called sovereign citizens movement and specifically warned against Christians who take the Bible literally. Beware of these people. They're a threat. Now, of course, the Colorado State Police later said the undersheriff who reported the incident misinterpreted the training material and that no one else in the class raised similar concerns. But how many Bible-believing Christians were actually in the class in the first place who would fully understand what was being suggested? Oh, and the instructor reportedly later questioned some of the troopers present if they were ready and willing to confiscate illegal weapons, if ordered to, from American citizens. That same instructor also reportedly said that he would soon be leaving the Colorado State Police to join the Department of Homeland Security, DHS. I'm sure Big Sis will welcome him with open arms. 
so. This is where we're at right now in America. Things are moving very fast, almost too fast to keep up with, and in the wrong direction. If you are a Bible-believing Christian, you are eventually going to be asked to make a choice. Deny your faith. Conform to the ways of this world and take the easy way out. Just ride the progressive wave. Or you can stand boldly. You can speak truth to power. And you can leave all the consequences to God. Be strong and courageous like God told Joshua. Or you can cave. There's no gray areas when it comes to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and his son. If you think it can never happen in America, look at Europe. Both of my guests today bring us free speech horror stories from the old continent. A bit later in the show, we'll talk to Lars Hedegaard. He's a courageous counter-jihad activist in Denmark who recently almost lost his life in an Islamic terror attack because he speaks out about Islamism, Sharia, and Jihad and its threat to Western civilization. But up first, we have Sam Nunberg. Sam is a good friend of this show, and he is the director of The Legal Project, an organization doing great work to preserve free speech in the West. He's working on a groundbreaking case right now out of Spain regarding free speech about Islam. Take a look. As you know, at The Legal Project, we represent our main focus is to protect the right in the West to freely discuss Islam, Islamists, and Islamic terrorism. Um, after the Benghazi affair, the attack on 9-11, which was rationalized even by our own State Department under the canard that it was based on a video. Uh, Imran, who is, as you said, a Pakistani a convert from Islam, who was granted asylum in 2004 from Spain, he produced a video. He made this video. And the video was to be another video, just like the previous quote-unquote video that caused the... Uh, like the Benghazi one. Right. Basically, Sam, when he set out, it was kind of to copy, not copy, but kind of in the same vein as the quote-unquote anti-Muhammad filmmaker here in the U.S. Right, right. And he's, his point was, and it's the point that my, uh, my boss, your friend, Dr. Daniel Pipe, stressed in a column was that Islam, like everything else, for better or worse, needs to understand that in the West, we turn sacred cows into hamburgers. It may not be right, may not be fair, may not be nice, but that's the reality. And that's the protection of the freedom of expression, that's the protection of the First Amendment in our country. So he produces this video and he talks to the Spanish authorities about the video and he decides, you know what, I'm not going to release this video. And he actually did not release it. I'll get into that a little later. But when the video was actually put on YouTube by Terry Jones in Florida, he um, was immediately given six days later a seven-page notice that his asylum status has been revoked and he's a quote-unquote national security threat. So we had a six-day turnaround too. I mean, as we know in the U.S., a federal government moves in six days. That's pretty uh, historic in itself, right, to get the bureaucrats going. And he is, we are now appealing it in the Spanish High Court, that decision. But I can tell you the Interior Ministry has stood by the decision in their initial pleadings. They're trying to enforce this. So this, from a point of view of the cases you've covered before in Europe, is the first time that uh, we'll call a quote unquote blasphemy has been threatened for deportation. So the Spanish government, which, quote, which allegedly operates under civil law, is trying to deport Imran back to Pakistan where he would certainly be killed for blasphemy. What's their motivation, Sam? I mean, uh, the Spanish government, like you said, six days they act mm -hmm. out. Uh, <clears throat> Who is kind of pushing them? What's their motivation here? Is there someone behind the scenes pressuring them? Maybe some... Well, I will say, Eric, we've had, uh, I've had six, uh, six back and forths, I'll put it, with the, uh, our own State Department, our own Department of Justice, Civil Rights Division, on my FOIA requests. Uh, they will not release them yet. I could be suing them as well. I will get those FOIA requests. I think that this goes into that narrative that they built. You know, um, when we talk to national security correspondents as yourself that broke the real Benghazi story, they said the issue was the CIA cables were ignored, the uh, Defense Department cables were ignored, but the State Department said this is because of the video. That was the narrative taken. That's where the talking points came. Yeah. Now, as we know, this has been promoted by our government as a new rationale. I mean, it's a sad state of affairs when our own military 
you know, the greatest military on the nation with the most historic soldiers in the history of the world. We have our Secretary of Defense, as you may recall, in 2010 calling Terry Jones not to burn the Quran. I mean, Terry Jones, God bless him, he's an American. He's a guy in congregation of 20 people. Right. Okay. And the Secretary. <laughs> our Secretary I of mean, Defense. Um, Gen then General Petraeus, who was head of Afghanistan, yeah. publicly called on him not to do it, Terry Jones. And then we had the video. And, you know, they, the Islamists are very, very sophisticated, a little more sophisticated than us, unfortunately, or at least our government representatives. And they know how to play our laws against us. Which is why I think this Imran case is very important. Because not only, Eric, do we have the deportation matter, once again, where a Spanish government is trying to enforce a Sharia blasphemy ruling through their own legal system. But now, they have just brought a hate speech case against Imran. This is the first time we've had a two-tiered assault on, uh, on someone trying to promote freedom of expression on Islamist issues. Coming up, free speech advocate Lars Hedegaard tells us how he escaped the grips of an Islamic terrorist. Stay tuned. Attention sleep apnea patients. Are you tired of the expense and hassle of getting your CPAP and BiPAP supplies? Are you fed up with dealing with ill-fitting, leaking, or worn out masks and straps? Are you worried about the effects that unsanitary tubes, cushions, and filters have on your health? If you said yes to any of these questions, Allied Medical Supply Network has the solution to your problems. You could qualify to have your supplies regularly delivered right to your door at little or no cost to you. That's right, no more inconvenience, no worn out masks and straps, no more unsanitary equipment, just restful sleep. Call Allied Medical Supply Network today to determine if you may qualify to receive your fresh brand name supplies at little or no cost. Don't delay, call us now to see if you are eligible to save money on regular delivery of your CPAP and BiPAP supplies. Call 1-800-815-9947. That's 1-800-815-9947. Or go to CPAPSupplyHelpline.com. Announcing an important breakthrough in healthcare that can benefit everyone. If you or anyone you love needs affordable health insurance, regardless of a pre-existing medical condition, call Quick Insurance 123 today and get the immediate relief you deserve. Quick Insurance 123 was created to provide affordable health insurance to all uninsured Americans with or without pre-existing conditions. This is not a discount card. This is a real insurance program that lets you choose from many affordable health plans with access to doctors, hospitals, emergency services, and more. So call the number on your screen now and get the health coverage you need just for calling. As a special bonus, we'll send you a free prescription savings card that could save you up to 85% on your prescriptions. That's right, you could save up to 85% on your prescriptions just for calling. Call Quick Insurance 123 to find out how you can get affordable health insurance and receive your free prescription savings card just for calling. Don't wait. Getting a free quote is as easy as one, two, three. Call today. Well, Lars, describe for us what happened on the night of February 5th, 2013. It wasn't on the night. It was in the morning at 11.20 uh, uh, a.m. Somebody buzzed my door phone and uh, fortunately it doesn't work, so I, I can't buzz people in. Uh, nor can I talk to them. So I open a window from my apartment from where I can see the, uh, the front door. And there's a man standing there with a uh, postal uniform. And uh, uh, I, he says, I have a package for you. So I say, OK, I'll come down and open the door. Yeah. I walk down, open the door, and he hands me a package which turns out to be empty. Uh, nothing in it. Uh, it the police found out. So uh, as I was holding the, the package, he pulls out a gun and shoots at my head and misses my right ear. Um, you felt it go by, I think you would say. Absolutely. I heard felt the, the bullet you know, go right by, yeah. Yeah. And right uh, away you knew instinctively what was happening and you reacted. Yeah, he was uh, trying then to cock the, uh, the pistol for a second shot uh, and was fumbling with it. He was obviously not that good. So I tried to hit him in the face with my right fist, which made him lose or drop the gun. And we were then fighting over that. And he recovered it and tried to cock it again. And I was sort of, uh, I don't know what I was doing, trying to uh, prevent him from doing it. And uh, he could not uh, really make it work. And then uh, after a while, he ran. Uh, 
And the whole thing must have taken about, I don't know, seven, eight seconds? That's what it seemed like an eternity, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, uh, <coughs> you've got a, t a different conception of time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when your life is on the line. Well, Lars, he ran. Was there an accomplice? Was there a second guy outside, or was it just him? I don't know. I didn't Still, see yeah. any. Uh, and, uh, I uh, thought I had read an account that there may have well, been Well, there are all kinds of accounts. Yeah. You know, people will embellish, and, and uh, some people have said he shot several times and, and right. uh, whatnot, and there was a, a car and two other people, and I don't know anything yeah. about that. Yeah. I know well, the New York Times has basically suggested it was your fault, but we'll, we'll get to that. Yeah, too. So yeah. there are a lot I, of I, variations. I, I, saw, I saw that, yeah. Uh, now, he was an Arab or a Pakistani, apparently, or South Asian or Middle Eastern uh, descent. Not South Asian. He could have been Arab, he could have been uh, Iranian, or he could have been Pakistani. Uh, that's, uh, he was obviously an immigrant or a descendant of immigrants. And he is still on the loose. He has not been caught yet. I don't think he has, no. He might have been caught this morning. I haven't heard it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you right now, Lars, how are you living? Do you have security now? Are you in a, what's your situation? I would rather not talk about that sure. because not to give people ideas. Uh, I have some problems, you know. Uh, uh, I can't live as freely as I would. I'd like to have a haircut but, yeah. but I, uh, <laughs> before coming on this show. But I, I haven't had the opportunity because I cannot go into a barber shop. Well, Without. we are honored to have you. Thank you. You look great. Don't worry about okay. it. Much more coming up with Lars Hedegaard. How did this all happen? What's going on in Denmark? Stay tuned. Remember to check out the Stackelbeck on Terror blog at CBNnews.com 24-7 for the latest on these and other stories. Do you want to know the truth about the jihadist in your backyard? Then be sure to pick up my book, The Terrorist Next Door how the government is deceiving you about the Islamist threat. Available wherever books are sold from coast to coast. Today we're on a field trip to discover what inflation is doing to our paper money. In this hand is a $20 bill and in this hand is a $20 US gold coin. They used to have the same buying power, but how much can they buy today? In this first basket is what my $20 bill buys, milk, bread, peanut butter, and jelly. And here's what one $20 gold coin will buy. Six baskets full, worth nearly $2,000, almost a hundred times more food, simply by owning gold dollars instead of paper dollars. History shows that the gold coins have been the best way to beat the rising cost of living. So class, the moral is that unless you want to live on peanut butter and jelly sandwiches in the future, you should turn some paper dollars into gold coins now. How and why is explained in a new book, The Great Debasement. Call the number below for a totally free copy. And that's the simple truth. Help! If an emergency happened right now, you can have help at the push of a button with Medical Alert. Remember when I took that fall, Mary? Oh, yes, that was terrible. Yes, it was. Help! And I thought, what if you hadn't been there? I ordered my medical alert the next day. I can't describe how safe I feel now with my medical alert. You didn't know I was wearing it, did you? Medical alert is easy to install, waterproof, and covers you inside your home and out. It helps me feel safe from fires, break-ins. And of course, a medical alert. And if you don't have a home phone, don't worry. They have that covered. There's always help at the push of a button. Don't wait till you need it. Get medical alert for less than a dollar a day. There are no long-term contracts. Order now and get your second button free. Call for your free brochure. For your free medical alert system with second button free, call 800-575-8507. And welcome back. We're talking to Lars Hedegaard. Lars, uh, talk about the response to this attempted assassination. It was an attempted assassination of you mm -hmm. at your home. Right. Talk about the Danish government's response. And how about the average Dane on the street? Has this woken people up to the Islamist threat? <sighs> Hard to judge about the uh, general population, but I, the political response was, uh, was excellent. I mean, the prime minister uh, of Denmark, uh, Helle Thorning Schmidt, went out right away and said that this is absolutely unconscionable. Uh, and so did all the uh, political leaders. And uh, 
it was front page news, of course, uh, in, in, in Denmark. Um, we then, uh, the Free Press Society, of which I'm the president, I, I couldn't really do anything because I was living under deep police protection in some safe house. Uh, so, but the, my colleagues there organized a, a, a big conference in our parliament building on the 21st of February where all of the political leaders came and, and gave a speech about free speech and, and how we need to protect it. And uh, I thought the political response was, was uh, excellent. Two of the parties that were there, the Danish People's Party and Liberal Alliance, uh, although they're quite opposed to each other, uh, came up with some uh, concrete proposals to strengthen uh, free speech, such as... Um, There's no First Amendment in Europe like we have here in the US. People need to understand that. No, quite the contrary. Uh, in Denmark, we have something called uh, paragraph 266B in the Penal Code, which makes it a, an offense. Uh, to denigrate or talk evil about religions or ethnicities or a number of groups. And Lars, just to catch people up, uh, we had you on the show a few months ago and Lars was convicted for quote unquote hate speech against I was Islam acquitted. and acquitted. Yes. Thank God and absolutely rightfully so. Obviously it was a travesty. Um, but that's, that's heartening that the Danish government responded like that. And the Danes, look, had problems in 2006 with the uh, Mohammed cartoons, the Absolutely. riots, yes. kind of stemmed from Denmark. Um, the Danish media, and I should say the international media, the New York Times, the response has been a, li a little bit different, not quite as encouraging, Lars. New York Times, I read a piece this morning on my way in preparing for our interview. They basically suggested that, hey, this head of guard guy, He's got a big mouth, he's a racist, he had it coming. Yes, of course, I'm not a racist, never, uh, never been a racist, will never be a racist. Um, I saw that uh, piece uh, in the New York Times. If you course, could call and, it that, uh, a, it, piece a piece of something, <laughs> a piece of but something. it was a piece. Yes, it was. Uh, then the guy who wrote it, he went to Denmark and, and interviewed some of my uh, enemies there uh, who, who, who said that, uh, you know, he's a, he's a bad guy and he's, uh, he's, he's corseted himself. In the Danish press, uh, the reaction was mixed. Most, most of the leading articles, of course, supported free speech and said I should not have been, I should not be killed. That's a very bad idea. But then on the other hand, uh, I'm an evil man and I should have thought better of what I've been saying and should have used my right of free speech in a, in a better way. So um, at least two of the leading papers had that, had that line. Uh, some others uh, chose not to, not to scold me on the day of my uh, attempted assassination. How nice of them. Uh, they gave nice. you a grace period after you were nearly killed. Well, they gave me a grace period of about half an hour or so yeah. uh, until they, <laughs> they started attacking me again as if I was the, uh, you know, the guy who was, uh, in, he was uh, quoted uh, in the New York Times as their, their uh, lead man on this. Um, he had uh, then been, he'd been saying that uh, or said recently that, that I'm a man of violence, verbal violence or verbal terror. That's a new thing he's invented. So it's like I'm sort of a terrorist and a murderer myself. So, uh, you know, what's the difference between the man who tried to kill me and, and what I've been saying? So that's the line. Lars, we have about 30 seconds left before the break. Um, Number one, do you think this is going to be more of a trend in Europe, the silencing, violent silencing of free speech about Islam? Number two, real quick, can it come here to America? It can come here to America, no question about that. Uh, I'm afraid it's a, it's a, it's a uh, matter of time. Um, I hope it won't spread any more than it has in Europe. But we've been, you know, of the murders we've had, Theo van Gogh and Pimfer Town and a number of other people who have been killed or, or who have been attempted to, to have been killed. For speaking uh, out strongly and truthfully about out, Islam. You don't need to kill very many people. You can just kill one here and one there and, and uh, put the fear into, into, into people and say, well, I don't want to go that way because see what happened to Lars and see what happened to Gerd Wilders and, and to uh, Ayan Hirsi Ali. She was driven out of Europe. Uh, so, you know, um, you kill one and scare thousands. Well, you're here, you're speaking out. Thank God, Lars. Wrapping up with Lars Hedegaard after the break. Don't move. 
When you're driving along and your cell phone rings, do your eyes instantly go off the road? Then you need to get a grip. Hi, David Jones here with the new GripGo, the most versatile hands-free mount that will instantly grip any phone for safe driving. Just attach the suction cup to your windshield or dash and GripGo grabs your phone ultra fast. That it peels right off. And don't worry, there's no sticky residue left behind. The 360 degree pivoting mount allows you to always get the perfect viewing angle. It's even strong enough to grab and hold this expensive smartphone out the window, yet it comes right off with ease. That's the advantage of GripGo. You can get the amazing GripGo with dashboard mount for only $14.95. We'll send you a second kit free. Just pay separate processing and handling. Get two complete GripGo systems for just $14.95. To order GripGo for $14.95 plus processing and handling, call 1-800-709-5259 or order online at getgripgo.com. Jim is 38, mortgage, married, three great kids. He wants to protect his family with a $500,000 term life insurance policy. What do you think it'll cost him? $100 a month? 60? 40? Actually, none of the above. Jim can get a $500,000 policy from a highly rated insurer for under $19 a month. His secret? Select Quote. Select Quote is impartial. They'll comparison shop the pick of insurance companies like these to give you a choice of your best prices. SelectQuote has great savings on term life for women, too. Jim's wife, Deidre, can get a $500,000 policy for under $16 a month. SelectQuote has helped make term life insurance affordable for hundreds of thousands of people since 1985. How about you? Just call this number or go to SelectQuote.com. SelectQuote. We shop. You save. And welcome back. We're talking to Danish freedom fighter Lars Hedegaard. Uh, Lars, uh, the attempted assassination. Uh, thank God you're with us. We need your strong voice, your bold voice. Um, but you have a theory on why it happened. Of course, I've been thinking uh, what, what new has happened uh, that I haven't done before. And I've been doing one new thing, which is to, uh, together with my, my uh, lovely colleague, Ingrid Kalkvist, We've started putting out this uh, newspaper, weekly newspaper in Swedish. Dispatch paper. International. Dispatch International coming out every week, and we started on the 3rd of January. Um, and it's much hated in, in, in Sweden. It's the most hated newspaper uh, <coughs> in Sweden. Uh, it's called uh, Racist and uh, Nazi uh, and whatnot. You can uh, subscribe to it in English on, online. Excellent. We love what you're doing, Lars. We love that you're supporting freedom. We're, we're so thankful you're here. You're here with us. Come back anytime. Keep Thanks it up, for Lars. Me. Okay. Thanks. Anytime, Thank you. my friend. Okay. Right. Well, for Lars Hedegaard, uh, it's Zarek Stackelbeck. Until next week, remember, just like Lars, never hold your peace in the face of these threats. God bless. See you next week. Remember to check out the Stackelbeck on Terror blog at CBNNews.com 24-7 for the latest on these and other stories.